Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Porter McRoberts. This is my partner, Dr. Paul Wu. We are interventional physiatrists in South Florida. Today we're going to talk a little bit about MRI. There's a lot of hubbub about MRIs. A lot of people tell me they need an MRI. Patients come in, I'm sure they ask you, I need an MRI. When am I going to get my MRI? What we're going to talk about is when you actually need one, when you don't, what do they show, what's the good, what's the bad, what do you expect, why do you need one, why wouldn't you? Uh, Dr. Wu is very, very smart, I can attest to that. But I'm asking a few pointed questions. Um, let's say I'm coming in and I have just had the worst pain in my back. Um, and I come in, do I need an MRI? Well, it depends. Uh, you know, MRI, uh, one of the most frequent questions I get is, uh, MRI shows my pain? Does it tell me where my pain is? And Doesn't it show pain? Uh, you know, that's uh, actually a loaded question and I'll give you my evasive answer to that. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, to us, and as we mentioned uh, over and over again, and this is actually the philosophy of our practice, we are treating a human being. We're not treating a picture. Uh, I look at you, you look at Porter, a nice handsome young man. Very nice. Uh, That's my know. MRI you're looking at. Hey, yeah. So when I'm still looking at MRI, MRI is a picture of someone's spine. It's just like nothing more than a snapshot of someone's spine. Uh, except it's, it's more you know black and white technical uh, and take a little bit of training to read it uh, but it doesn't tell you exactly uh, per se to uh, to as far as where the pain could, uh, is at it could it could be suggestive but it's not a hundred percent if someone coming here with uh, not able to walk uh, weakness in the leg not able to control their urine obviously I'll say either you go to the emergency room and have them get a MRI uh, stat. There's a neurologic change. There's a neurological change. Uh, if there's something have chronic pain, mm -hmm. uh, someone, uh, and I, in that case, you know, if it's more axial pain or back pain with a radicular symptom or limb pain. Uh, What's that mean, radicular? Is meaning, that sciatica? Uh, yeah, something sciatica or arm pain associated with neck pain. Uh, if it's back pain, sometimes I really rely on physical examination or history. Uh, and determine is it likely I'm going to benefit from getting uh, MRI. For instance, someone come here with uh, back pain only, and it's been going for maybe for uh, six years. I get an MRI, and this gentleman is maybe 80 years old. Uh, one might expect to see the MRI before I even started. I know likely just with age, there's going to be changes. So we already know that from a different study, you don't necessarily have uh, uh, back pain from the disc. Uh, because uh, the aging doesn't this you know uh, this having problem having a de degeneration mm -hmm. or uh, having just like having gray hair necessarily cause pain. So now I get an MRI, uh, you know I'm going to see degenerative disc, but does that mean anything to me? Not necessarily. I really had to examine. So an MRI shows you everything, but it doesn't really show you what hurts. Is that what you're telling me? I think uh, there's chance it might show you, there's certain things, signal that we see, a part can suggest, but no, it, uh, by looking at it, it doesn't turn say, pink where you hurt. Doesn't, no, not necessarily. It doesn't say, hey, I'm right here. Yeah. No, it doesn't do that. Um, and so I think there's also, and almost like, uh, to me, it's, uh, you can share with me your experience, it's almost like uh, if I were to uh, add more choice to my multiple yeah. problem, multiple I, choice problem. That, that's exactly right. That's the way I think of it too. I, I tell patients, an MRI, is a digital autopsy. Mm -hmm. It actually physically slices you up and looks at your anatomy. I feel naked. <laughs> you should, man. <laughs> and even if you're clothed, it's still gonna show us what's inside. Right. But that, that said, it will not show us what hurts. And that's the difference, is because some part of the aging process hurts, mm -hmm. some parts aren't. Right. They, don't, they don't cause pain. In differentiating these things that sometimes appear exactly the same on an MRI, say arthritis, I'm sure you've seen facet arthritis, mm -hmm. many times it's not the source of the pain. Yet you see it there on the MRI. So it can be, it, it can trip up a lot of patients and a lot of doctors, I think. Just because they have an abnormality on their MRI does not mean that's the actual source of their pain. It's interesting, there's a study looking at facet joint arthritis, mm -hmm. arthritis in the spine, in the neck. And it said that people who responded to a, a diagnostic block, 60% of the time, it was not picked up on an MRI, mm -hmm. which is why we do the diagnostic right. blocks. It's not essential there. And insurers may uh, wonder why. <laughs> but it's because the MRI doesn't, it misses it 60% of the time. Right. Certainly there are other ways of, um, of getting imaging uh, of the spine. And uh, what is the utility? Let's say the insurance denies an MRI, they won't let you have one. Is there another way to look at the spine? 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of time, uh, you know, I think a simple x-ray mm -hmm. uh, of the neck or lower back, uh, especially if you're talking about, you know, purely ac uh, back pain or neck pain, I think x-ray actually tell, could potentially tell just as much information as uh, uh, initially as far as uh, uh, information needed for treatment uh, as the MRI. Uh, for instance, you know, if someone has back neck pain on, or back pain on examination, it shows consistent uh, with uh, uh, arthritis of the spine. You look at an x-ray, it does show arthritis on the spine. Uh, you already know based on the disc space to know if there's degeneration on the disc. Uh, however, if you're suspecting that the pain is more axial because of arthritis, I think x-ray itself suffice to go ahead and, uh, you know, given a patient fail of conservative treatment, go ahead and perform a diagnostic for situ and nerve block and actually treating accordingly. Hmm. Rather than go straight to, you know, go, go through a whole loop of MRI while a patient has uh, pain that's been going on for years or given yes. severe pain. And I think that's, that's the way I see it. Um, you know, there's, I personally, uh, unless I have true clinical suspicion of something uh, neurological or, you know, say, you know, a high suspicion of a disc uh, herniation, yes. I personally try to avoid uh, uh, CT myelogram, uh, which is actually interthecal injection, uh, and I think that carries its own risk. Uh, I might, however, uh, depending on the situation, give, uh, get just plain old casket for contrast. Sure. Now, there is there's some risk with radiation. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's some papers right. that came out and said that uh, having a CT scan to increase your risk of cancer by 0.1%. Percent. Mm -hmm. While it's a very small risk, it is an actual risk that is measurable. Is there any risk of, uh, of cancer with an MRI, or is it gonna, can it hurt a patient to have an MRI? Uh, the, as far as cancer, no. Uh, there's no risk of uh, cancer. I mean, the way MRI works is, you know, I'm going to put my physic physicist hat here, and this is a very small hat. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's, it's based on the magnetic field of a person's body that's generated, or property, I should say, uh, based on the, uh, the water content, particularly hydrogen, uh, the spin, and uh, based on that, and apply magnetic field and actually basically cause your, every single molecule of your body uh, hydrogen molecule to spin a certain way, and you pick a sig magnetic signal from that and uh, do computer imaging. Man, there's Impressed. some smart people out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, as far as the cancer risk, no. Uh, however, there's some limitation if you have a pacemaker. Sure. Uh, you cannot have MRI at this time. I think in the future that might change. Hmm. Um, you know, spinal cord stimulator at this time, I think uh, there's, they just start coming out with uh, uh, MRI compatible. Uh, spinal cord stimulator, but that will be another issue. Uh, if you have uh, a lot of metal, and depending on what age of uh, the metal is, the older generation tend to be more ferromagnetic, mm. meaning that they can have MRI and could have heating effects, could have, I don't think it will be a, a motion problem, but uh, if you have, uh, even just given a signal itself, if you do have uh, uh, hardware in your yeah. neck, in your spine, uh, you could have, you know, the, the, the metal image itself can distort Distorted the, the yeah. signals. Sure, uh, makes it harder to see. Definitely, and sometimes you see a big black void. Yes, I've had the same thing. It's a little frustrating. You're trying to find the very specific anatomy, and there's an artifact from metal that's uh, mm -hmm. you know sometimes even far away. Right. Um, lastly, um, we do some uh, pump implants. Uh, mm -hmm. Are pumps uh, something that can be MRI? Are they MRI compatible? Yeah, I think a pump is a little different than a stem. I mean, uh, you know. Pump, they, you know, if you, you can actually program it to, uh, to for it, to, you know, to uh, turn off. Turn, turn off uh, sure. And even uh, if you go through an MRI without turning it off, they usually restart afterwards. Uh, so, other than uh, pacemakers, what other kind of people shouldn't have an MRI? Can you think? Uh, shouldn't have MRI. What if they've been shot? You know, well, depending on the location of that uh, bullet, you have to be careful. I mean, you know, especially when bullets. Uh, Lodging certain position that actually with uh, small fragments uh, that can move. Sure. Uh, what about a hip replacement? A hip replacement, if you're looking at, you know, the MRI and uh, uh, metal is really depending on the location and sure. the distance from Probably the site. Probably safe to have? I would say in general, I have no major problem with it. Uh, and I think most of the new generation of uh, hip uh, prosthesis doesn't have, it's more titanium based rather than a uh, uh, ferromagnetic compound or uh, metal base. Uh, I think, what, is there any uh, 
time that you actually obtain the MRI, do you obtain MRI with contrast or without contrast? It depends on the situation. Contrast, we usually uh, inject into the bloodstream to uh, show uh, different densities of tissues a little mm -hmm. more clearly. So if there's, there's a problem within soft tissue, say cancer that's suspected or a possible infection, something along those lines where I really need very, very high resolution or very good detail within a specific uh, uh, part of the anatomy, then I may get it with contrast. I may also, in some instances, let's say we're looking at the labrum in the hip or a mm -hmm. meniscal tear, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to appreciate on the normal MRI, I mm -hmm. might actually inject gadolinium into the hip right. or into the knee joint and then perform the MRI to provide a really very highly detailed, resolute picture of that particular part. But those are the only times I use uh, contrast. What if someone's uh, claustrophobic? Uh, that's a great question. You know, there is open MRI. A lot of people know about open MRI. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's even intravenous sedation. Sometimes there you can just take a Valium and get through it. Um, there's often even uh, extremity that's specific to, uh, uh, or extremity MRI, where you just put okay. your arm in it or your leg uh, um, and not necessarily have to put your whole body. So there, there are options. You can have a sitting MRI, standing MRI. There are a lot of options. That, that shouldn't be a reason not to get an MRI anymore. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yes. Are you claustrophobic? Uh, uh, I think that's the answer is off camera. <laughs> I'm not. Right on. Well, I think that pretty much does it for MRI. Do you have any last thoughts? No, I think, uh, you know, like pretty much uh, what we, you know, I think this uh, MRI segment, you know, I want people to know that uh, how we see MRI and how we order it and how we use it. Very good. Yeah. You know, we're going to do a lot more segments on other aspects of chronic low back pain, on neck pain, on exercise, what to do, what not to do, um, what procedures can be done, how we go about the diagnosis and treatment of chronic and acute pain. So please, Look us up on uh, YouTube. We're going to have a lot more videos for you to watch uh, and educate you about uh, what we have now and hopefully uh, coming technology. Thanks. Thank you.